Hey guys, it's me, Miss Norris, and today, in honor of Black History Month, I'd like to share the story of Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is our first woman vice president and our first vice president who is multicultural. Today, I'm going to be reading the story, Kamala Harris, Rooted in Justice. This story was written in 2020 by Nikki Grimes and was illustrated by Laura Freeman. And it tells the story of Kamala Harris. If you're ready to hear the story, I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. Kamala Harris, Rooted in Justice. And there's a picture of Kamala going into school as a young girl. Eve slammed the door when she got home from first grade. Eve, you know we don't slam doors in this house, her mom said. What's going on? Teacher asked us what we wanted to be when we grew up, and I said president, and Calvin said, girls can't be president, stupid. Well, he's wrong, said her mother. Girls can grow up to be president. In fact, a girl from right here in Oakland hopes to be president one day. So this girl named Eve has come home from school and she's upset because someone at school told her she couldn't be president because girls couldn't be president. And her mother says, well, that's not true. And there's someone here in Oakland that is trying to do just that. Life is a story you write day by day. Kamala's begins with the name that means lotus flower. See how her beautiful smile opens wide like petals fanning, at, fanning across the water's surface? But you don't see the flower's roots. Her roots, they grow deep, deep, deep down. Let me show you. So Kamala means lotus flower and a lotus flower floats on top of the water, but you never see its roots. But they go deep, and, that, and that's one of the reasons you don't see them. Ooh. Kamala's family line was a strong black and brown braid coiling from India, where her mother, Shamala, was born, to Jamaica, where her father, Donald, was born to Berkeley, California, where her parents fell in love and married, to Oakland, where Kamala was born. It was a good beginning. Is this like once upon a time? Not exactly, said Eve's mom. This story is true. Right away, Kamala was like clay her parents molded for action. When her mother wasn't hunting cures for cancer and her father wasn't teaching, both marched for civil rights and went to lectures by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Kamala was right there too, bouncing along in her stroller, chewing on her pacifier, and words like peace and justice. What's justice? Eve asked her mom. Justice is another word for fairness. So even as a baby in her stroller, Kamala was involved in peaceful protest and listening to great speakers. Once, when tiny Kamala was fussing, her mother couldn't figure out what was the matter. What do you want, little girl, she asked. Freedom, said Kamala, and a waterfall of laughter sputtered from her mother's mouth. At demonstrations, marchers often chanted, what do we want? And the answer was always, freedom. Little Kamala had been listening. Kamala's baby sister, Maya, screamed her way into the world when Kamala was two. In no time, the sisters were having faraway adventures together, like visiting their grandparents in Zambia. Grandfather P. V. Gopalan was a senior diplomat there. He had once fought for India's independence. His wife, Rajam, Kamala's grandmother, fought for their rights of women. Little by little, Kamala and Maya learned that fighting for justice ran in the family. So not only do Kamala and her sister Maya want to be activists, but their parents were activists and so were their grandparents. It runs in the family. 
Sadly, when Kamala was seven, her family squeezed into a different shape. Her parents divorced and her daddy moved to Palo Alto, while mommy and the girls packed for the flatlands, the black working class area in Berkeley. Having a long distance daddy can make your heart hurt, but Kamala's new neighbors welcomed her family with smiles and helping hands, warm as sunshine. Still, Kamala was sometimes lonely for her daddy. Luckily, her godmother, Aunt Mary, lived close by and gave Kamala extra hugs whenever she needed them. So, when Kamala's family divorced, they moved to separate places and Kamala missed her daddy. Like other black and brown kids in the flatlands, Kamala was part of a California program to integrate the schools. Every day, she rode a yellow bus, bumping through familiar city streets, all the way to the wealthy white part of town, with sprawling hillsides painted with gardens. Thousand Oaks Elementary was a world away, but Kamala didn't mind. There, she got to meet kids who were rich and poor, black and white, kids who celebrated holidays, kids, uh, kid, kids who'd celebrated holidays she'd never heard of. There were teachers who taught her to count to ten in many different languages. Ooh, I can count to ten in Spanish, said Eve. Who taught you that? asked her mom. Guadalupe from next door, Eve smiled proudly. So as Eve is hearing the story of Kamala from her mom, she's recognizing that she and Kamala have a lot in common. School let out before Mrs. Harris got home, so Kamala and Maya spent the afternoons at the Shelton house two doors down, where Mrs. Regina Shelton ran daycare and after-school programs with posters on the wall of Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, and Harriet Tubman. Mrs. Shelton was a second mother to Kamala, always encouraging her to have confidence. Once, Mrs. Shelton bit into a lemon bar, Kamala had made all by herself, accidentally using salt instead of sugar. Oh, delicious, said Mrs. Shelton. Maybe a little too much salt, but really delicious, she said, never pointing out Kamala's total failure. That day, Mrs. Shelton let Kamala walk away feeling successful, feeling like she could do anything. So, it's nice to have people that are on your side and that believe in you even when you make mistakes. And that's what Mrs. Shelton was to Kamala. Even though she made those lemon bars with salt instead of sugar, she still said, mmm, that tastes really good. You did a great job. After school, Kamala's days bulged with busyness. She had homework, piano lessons, ballet classes, and Barbie playtime. Thursday nights were the best, though. The family would go to the Rainbow Sign, a cultural center celebrating black art, music, books, and film. James Baldwin, Baldwin spoke there. Maya Angelou read there, and Nina Simone sang there. Nina's gravelly voice, gravelly voiced version of To Be Young, Gifted, and Black, often rang through Kamala's home. The more she heard this favorite song, the more Kamala thought, I'm young, gifted, and black, too. So she got to go to a cultural center where many very famous black musicians and artists came to perform and speak. And one of those famous people was a singer named Nina Simone. And Kamala loved her. And I do, too. On Sundays, when, they're, when they weren't visiting their father, Kamala and Maya rocked from side to side at the 23rd Avenue Church of God, where they tapped tambourines and sang as part of the children's choir. Fill My Cup, Lord, was Kamala's favorite hymn. The church was where she learned the Bible, that God asks us to speak up for those who can't, to defend the rights of the poor and needy like some lawyers do. Her Uncle Sherman was that kind of lawyer. Maybe someday Kamala would be one too. I don't want to be a lawyer, said Eve, but I like making sandwiches for the homeless. That's helping too, right? Right, said her mom. 
In her first year of middle school, Kamala would need a lot of faith. She learned a new lesson about change, a lesson dressed in down jackets and mittens. Her family was moving north, where 12 feet of snow and her mother's new job waited in Montreal. It will be a wonderful adventure, Shamala told her girls. But Kamala grumbled. The thought of leaving her friends and the warmth of sunny California made her shiver. So her family was having a great life, enjoying church, enjoying everything, until Kamala's mom got a job in Montreal, which is in Canada, and it's a very cold place, very different from sunny California. It was February, and Montreal, robed in winter sparkling white, felt like it had ice in its veins. Kamala couldn't stop shivering. Worse yet, their new neighbors spoke French, a language Kamala's mother insisted her daughters learn. The English name of the French school her mother handpicked for them was Our Lady of the Snows. That's a funny name, said Eve. Maybe, said her mom, but Kamala wasn't laughing. So her new school means Our Lady of Snows. So there's a lot of snow where she is now. Montreal was no place for a lotus flower. Sighing, Kamala unpacked her new clothes and her old experiences, like marching for change with her mom. One spring day when the temperature rose enough for outdoor sports, Kamala and Maya marched in front of their apartment building waving picket signs because kids weren't allowed to play soccer on the front lawn. It wasn't fair, and Kamala cared a lot about fairness. The building manager read Kamala and Maya's signs and changed the rules. So sometimes if something's unfair, you need to let someone know it's unfair because they might not know that it's unfair until someone points it out and fights for what's right. Kamala adjusted to life in Canada, but memories of her home country still rang her heart like a bell. After graduating high school, she ached to return to America where her parents had nursed her on the civil rights movement. She couldn't wait to follow in the footsteps of her heroes, Constance Baker Motley, Charles Hamilton Houston, and Thurgood Marshall. Marshall had attended Howard University, and Kamala decided she would too. So Thurgood Marshall was one of the, was on the Supreme Court, and he was one of the first, he was the first black man to be elected to the Supreme Court. And Kamala decided that she would follow in his footsteps. It sounds like he had done some of the right things. Kamala's time at Howard was focused on the future. She competed on the debate team to sharpen her speaking skills. She interned at the Federal Trade Commission. She did research at the National Archives to study the workings of government. And on the weekends, she joined fellow students on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., to protest apartheid in South Africa. Kamala was preparing to be a woman warrior. Like Wonder Woman? asked Eve. No, better, said her mom. Wonder Woman isn't real. But Kamala is. <clears throat> Nothing matched the magic of her second summer break when Kamala stepped through the doors of the private Senate subway as an intern for Senator Alan Cranston. Kamala could barely hold in the secret of her joy. What could be better than learning from someone whose footsteps echoed in the halls of power every day? So she got to start working for a senator and started to be able to learn how to work in government the way she'd always wanted to. After Howard, California called Kamala home to study at Hastings College of the Law. Court cases and contracts filled Kamala's mind but changing lives filled her heart. Elected president of the Black Law Students Association, Kamala invited major law firms to a job fair so that more black graduates had a fair chance to be hired by the best companies in the country. This work was great practice for Kamala's future. So she, was, she did some really great stuff at her university, and in the end she made sure to invite people to her college so that other black students would be hired to the very best places to do their jobs. 
Graduating law school meant that there was one more exam to take, the California bar. Without passing it, Kamala could not practice the law. She didn't pass, which taught Kamala something new. Failure. Womp womp. It is the toughest teacher, but it can also be the best because it makes you dig down deep and try harder. On the second try, Kamala passed. If at first you don't succeed, said Eve's mom. Try, try again, finished Eve. So Kamala had some hard times and didn't pass her test on the first try, but she didn't say, oh, I guess I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. She just tried harder. Kamala was finally ready to climb the mountain of her dreams. First, deputy district attorney. Next, the first female district attorney of San Francisco. Then, the first black woman attorney general of California. Peak by peak, she rose, eventually becoming the second black woman voted into the U.S. Senate. Lawyer, prosecutor, senator, the little girl named Lotus Flower had turned herself into a person others could call on for help. Did she use magic to turn herself into, a, into that person, asked Eve? No, sweetie. Kamala just used hard work. So it's, sometimes things aren't necessary. There's a lot of magic in our world, but sometimes it's not magic. Sometimes you just have to work hard. As senator, Kamala fought for laws to help workers earn more money joined the Women's March on Washington for Equality and Civil Rights, and telephoned lawyers to help immigrant children who came to America looking for someplace safe to live. Each time she answered a call for help, Kamala proved that her family's legacy of public service was alive and well in her. What's, what's a legacy? asked Eve. It's like the inheritance you leave behind for your children. Kamala had traveled far, but she hadn't finished climbing the mountain of her dreams. On Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, on the TV show Good Morning America, Kamala told the world, I'm running for President of the United States. So you can see Senator Kamala Harris, live on GMA, rising Democratic star, announces presidential run. She immediately got goosebumps, wondering if Shirley Chisholm the first black woman to run for president was smiling down from heaven that very moment. So she's not the first woman to run for president, but she's so far the one who's come the closest. And she's not done yet. Months into the race, Kamala realized that running for president cost more money than she thought, and Kamala's campaign team didn't have enough. She decided to give up her run for the 2020 presidential nomination, Sad to leave the race, Kamala looked forward to all the good work she could still do as Senator Harris. That's okay, said Eve. If, you, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Exactly, said her mom. Will Donald and Shamala's daughter, I'm sorry, will Donald and Shamala's daughter ever get to call the White House home? Only God knows. Kamala Harris is still writing her American story. And so are you. I know what happens next, said Eve. What? asked her mom. Tomorrow I'll tell Calvin that he's wrong and he's a doofus. Eve Temple, I taught you better than that, said her mother. Okay, said Eve, her fingers crossed behind her back. I won't tell him. The end. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you really enjoyed the true story of Kamala Harris if you did, please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. If you're not a subscriber yet, please click that subscribe button down at the bottom of the page. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to say a big thank you to the Howie family who was able to loan me a wonderful collection of books that I can share with you, my YouTube viewers. And I hope to see you all again real soon. Bye-bye.